this is pretty wild. Jordy Peterson kind of goes on a deep end talking about Destiny and Noah and stuff. He's like in some kind of freaking uh, classroom talking to people. And it seems like he's gone kind of crazy after getting fired by Canada. Betray your destiny and see how long it takes you to be drowning in a storm. It'll happen immediately, and, and of course it will, because what, what's calling you to be your best is exactly the thing that's pushing you forward to manifest yourself most fully in the world. So he's saying here that if you betray your destiny, bad things will happen because there's some higher being controlling your life. So we don't have free will, according to Jordan Peterson. It's what you need. You run away from that, the boat's going to start to rock very, very quickly. Well, you all know that. You, per, you know that perfectly well. It, it, it's, hell, all you have to do is not study for an exam that you know that's coming up to see everything start to, the storm waters start to rise and everything start to rock. Okay, but how is, okay, I mean, I, I, I guess since tests are predetermined by the teacher, it is a part of a person's destiny, I, I, I guess. So if you plan something, it's part of your destiny. But I thought destinies were created by some kind of, you know, uh, you know, more powerful being that can control things, not by, you know, a person making a date for a test. It's pretty bloody obvious. So anyways, he's on this boat and there's a storm and all of the people on the boat who, who can't quite discriminate chaos from weather because they haven't differentiated the world to that degree, think, oh, the boat wouldn't be about to be swamped if we hadn't, some of us hadn't done something stupid and wrong. And there's logic in that, you know, you might think, well, God has nothing personal against you because of the storm, so you're confusing levels of analysis, but you got to give these people some credit. It's like, maybe they did do something stupid, maybe they didn't caulk the damn boat properly, maybe the ropes aren't in as good a shape as they might be, maybe they Maybe it was just their destiny not to do all these things, if you believe in destiny. I mean, if destiny does exist, that does mean everything's predetermined, everybody's actions. ...weren't paying attention to the weather when they went out on the ocean, you know? Or maybe they haven't made peace with their brother and so their hearts are bent and twisted out of shape so they don't make particularly good sailors. But... How does hating your brother make you a bad sailor? That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. That would be like, you know, getting on an airplane and then, you know, being like, oh, does my pilot hate his brother? Because if, he's, if he hates his brother, he won't be able to fly me to my destination. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I mean, if you drive a car, do you question if you hate people? Because if you hated people, you wouldn't be able to drive your car. Like, dude, Jordan Peterson is going crazy. It's like the idea that you encounter a storm because you're stupid and wrong is a really good idea, even though... Well, well, if you encounter a storm, if, if you have any problems in your life, if anything bad happens, that's because you're stupid and wrong. That's hilarious. Like, he's showing how much he actually hates people. No, oh, it's not of infinite applicability. Anyways, they draw lots. It's a primitive thing to do. It's like, well, it's, one, it's someone's fault. We don't know who. We're going to throw someone overboard, the worst sinner. Obviously, that's what God wants, some kind of sacrifice. So they all draw lots, and someone loses. And then Jonah stands up and says, well, sorry, guys. Like, I know that I've got a problem with God at the moment, so it's probably me. You better throw me over. And they don't. Okay, so he's saying in this story, people encountered a storm, so they decided to do a human sacrifice, and Jonas decided, hey, I got issues, so I'm going to, you know, jump overboard. And Jordan Peterson is, like, okay with people doing human sacrifices? I thought Christianity was supposed to do away with human sacrifices not encourage human sacrifices to better your life. Or is he speaking metaphorically where you're like supposed to just cut off people to make your life better? Because that's not always the case. Sometimes 
you can cut off good people. I mean, cutting off bad people in your life, yeah, that's good. But, you know, I, I don't even know what he's saying here. I don't really want to, but he finally convinces them. Over he goes, and the storm settles. Well, you know... Okay, so the storm settles after the human sacrifice, so, yeah, so I guess God likes human sacrifices? Is that what Jordan Peterson is saying? Sometimes if you're in a group of people in an organization, there is someone in the organization whose head isn't screwed on exactly straight. And they know exactly why it is, and what they've done wrong, and what puts them in that position. And they are poisoning the entire enterprise. And if you throw them overboard, or better, if they agree voluntarily to leave, then the storm will abate and everything will be okay. Is Jordan Peterson projecting here a little bit about him being, like, fired from being a, a psychiatrist, and then a psychiatrist, I mean? I don't know why I, like, butchered it the first time, psychiatrist, and pretending that he, like, voluntarily left. Dude is going downhill so fast. So anyways, they throw jo Job over or Jonah overboard, and a whale comes up and swallows him and takes him down to the bottom of the ocean. Well, we already know what that means, because we watched Pinocchio. It's yeah, we know what that means. That means he's going to die, because anybody that gets swallowed up by a creature large enough to swallow them that they would be dissolved by stomach acid because that's how stomach acids work and being eaten works. Like, you don't just get, like, regurgitated after three days completely normal. It's like when God abandons you because you've abandoned your destiny and the storms come up, the probability that you're going to be taken down to the, to the depths is extraordinarily high, and that happens in people's lives all the time. Well, so down there, Jonah repents. Well, what do you do when you're in the underworld? Well, you've been there before, when things fall apart on you, your friends have abandoned you, you're not as popular as you could be, you can't stand to look at yourself in the mirror. Into the underworld you go, and you think, gee... Oh, so the underworld is dealing with depression? I thought the underworld was supposed to be a physical place people went to for disobeying God or not believing in Him hard enough. like. So what is it? Is, is it like a literal place or a metaphysical place? Mm. Jeez, I've done a lot of things wrong, you know? Maybe I should reconcile myself with the world and I could get out of this. Well, so that's what Jonah does. He thinks, all right, I've got this destiny. I better go do what God says. So the whale spits him out onto the beach and off he goes to the city to tell... Okay, so once he decided to do what God says... You know, his predetermined destiny, his non-free will. The, well, then decided to spit Jonah out. So I guess God was controlling this whale and making this dude live in a whale for three days until he decided to follow his destiny. What if he never decided to follow his destiny? Would he just be in the well forever? And what was the point? Anyways, when God was controlling his destiny, anyways, he could have just made him always wanted to follow his destiny. Tell them what's wrong. Well, that's what that represents. That's these symbols, you know. It's so cool. This second one, I really, I really like. It's so interesting because you see Jonah re-emerging from the whale and he's got a halo around his head. You say, well, what's a halo? Well, have you ever looked at a quarter? Well, think about a quarter. A quarter's the moon. A quarter is the moon? Like, what? what is that supposed to even mean? And this is a small, small, small well if he's squeezing himself out of there like he's being, you know, rebirthed or something. Like, dude, I would not call that a whale. And who's on the quarter? The queen. The queen is surrounded by the halo of the moon. The queen's queen of the queen of the night, gold coin. That's the king's head on the sun. That's the halo. Well, what comes out of the belly of the? Well, I guess now it's going to be the king is the king of the moon since the queen is dead. Of the fish, it's the illuminated human being. It's the spirit of the illuminated human being. Well, that's what that means. Well, what does that mean? Well, what else would come out of chaos? You know, if you, if you fall apart and then you put yourself back together, what is it that comes back out? 
well, at least you're in better shape than you were before, you know, and, and then maybe you do that. Though, not everybody, some people can rebound from, you know, um, mental issues or mental trauma, especially if they have, you know, a good support system and stuff, but those who don't and don't have, like, good mental health services they can access, they end up deteriorating, and it's pretty sad, actually. That 20 times in your life, or 50 times, and you do it voluntarily, every time you do it, you're more like the thing with the halo, and less like the thing that's, you know, being thrown overboard by your friends. <laughs> being thrown overboard by your friends. Well, that's, that's something you want to think about. Y y yeah, am I going to be thrown metaphorically overboard by my friends if I'm having some slight mental issues or whatever, though he's trying to make it seem like it's a good thing because if that happens, you can come back if you repent to God and become better as long as you have God. And then you see this representation on the right. This is a very complicated representation. So in this one, you see Christ who's carrying his cross with the sun behind him. That's the halo that I was talking about. He's the person who's voluntarily accepted the necessity of death and renewal. That's what the cross represents. And so it sounds like just like any other old um, uh, uh, harvest-style god that dies and comes back to life. And being that Jesus is supposed to be God, and how the, 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 the like physical body dying would not harm the uh, totality of the God being. So it's like it means nothing. He created a being to be tortured and die and then act like there is a sacrifice. But if you ha if there is a sacrifice, you give up something permanently. It's not like you give us something and then three days later you get something back plus extra. That is a loan. So it's a, it's an, it's a, what would you call it? An abstracted representation of this, a further developed idea of this. And then you see in the back, this is a feminine symbol, right? It's a, it's a symbol of birth. And, and you'll you'll understand more when I, when I show you the symbols later. Oh no, a feminine symbol that has to be evil because femininity is evil. This is the eternal opening in the world from which new forms emerge. It's the place from which babies emerge. And you can tell that if you look carefully because you see all these little heads there with wings on them. Those are all spirits waiting to be born. And so the he <laughs> Right, yeah. Babies are born out of some kind of portal behind Jesus. That's where babies come from. Hero emerges from the, from the eternal feminine, willing to die and suffer, and in doing so, just defeating the snake, the snakes down there, and the adversary at the same time. Well, it's no wonder we don't understand those images. I mean, they're so unbelievably rich that how could you possibly articulate them? That's why they emerged in imagistic form to begin with. The yeah. Is they're just images out of people's minds. It's it's just like anybody else that created some random image about some deity that they've created or some horror, some sci-fi or fantasy or whatever. It doesn't mean these things are real. I mean, look at J.R. Token and all the imagery uh, that surrounds uh, what hobbits and stuff. They don't exist just because people created them. The artists get there before the philosophers, long before the philosophers. The dramatists get there way before the artists even. And so we, we figured it out. We represented it in art and literature and music and drama. And then we're on the cusp, so to speak, of understanding it in a fully articulated manner. And not a moment too soon. Are you aware that you're browsing data? Uh, that was kind of a long ad but hey if you gotten to uh if you gotten this far uh please like share and subscribe it would help me out a whole lot drop a comment and i hope you guys enjoy the content
does it mean for this symbol to emerge from the feminine symbol, let's say, to emerge from chaos? Well, this picture, this is a picture of Venus, the goddess of love, right? And so I cut this picture out of a larger picture, and it's Venus manifesting herself in a transcendent space in the sky in the same way that Christ did in the previous representation and she has rays coming off her and there's all these men who are knights kneeling in front of the image well what does that mean? well it means does this mean that Aphrodite is a real god because people worship her and believe her and stuff like that and there's images of her? like what? I guess people have seen her because there's images of her that men use the image of female perfection to motivate themselves and that's exactly right. That's Ah, uh, I see. Men need perfect women in order to gain motivation. Precisely what they do. You see that in the Tom Sawyer story. So Tom Sawyer is about 12 years old, and he's still hanging around with his friends like Huck Finn. And this girl moves across the street, Becky, and she comes out, and he's struck by her for the first time in his life. Something's changed. And the first thing he does is hop up on a picket fence and show off and balance in front of her. And he's saying, well, look at me, look at me. I'm, he's like the male bowerbird building something beautiful so the female will approve of it. And it's, it's motivation. Well, he, he, yeah, in that story, he saw, saw a chick, got infatuated, and wanted to try to impress her and get some attention. That is a good coming-of-age story. You know, and that's something that I think modern women don't really understand about men. They don't understand that, at least to the degree that males are uncorrupted and, and not better because of being rejected, they're doing everything they can to kneel before the eternal image of the feminine. Wow. Women can't understand that men aren't uncorrupted and they're just bowing to the image of the feminine. Wow, that's hilarious. No, yeah. Jordan Peterson is going fully insane here, and this, he definitely needs to get himself some mental help, and maybe uh, break away from this religious BS that he's uh, immersed himself into. And try to make themselves worthy. That's the chivalry story, right? That's what you should encourage in your partner. Okay, chivalry... And people think chivalry is all about like treating women with respect and stuff, but it was that was just part of it, a small part of it. A lot of it was about how knights should be more so than anything else. It wasn't like really how to treat women. I mean, the the, the knights treated the peasantry, the you know the poor people, like shit. So, what does that mean about chivalry? Should we be treating poor people badly? Eh, no. So, and so, out of chaos emerges this first form. It's the feminine form. It's partly the form that represents novelty as such. So, and, and on one hand it's promise, on the other hand it's threat. It, you novelty? Okay, what, the hand is a threat? Novelty is what the legs. Oh, I guess the right, uh, the right hand is a promise that equals to hope, but the left hand is a threat that goes to anxiety. And this all stems from what chaos, or she protects from chaos. But you know what this image is, everybody. Yeah, you know what they're talking about. This image, you know. We all, we all can see it. You wouldn't believe, and I don't know, because I don't know, I, I don't understand the situation with women as well as I understand the situation with men, obviously. Yeah, I can probably tell why you understand the situation with men a whole lot more, even though you don't want to come out of the closet about it. Being a man, but I... <coughs> I don't know if women have any idea how paralyzing they are to especially young men. <coughs> Ooh, do you hear that, women? You are a paralyzing Medusa. You make young men afraid. I mean, that happens with women, young women and young men alike. They 
get social anxiety when interacting with other people, especially if they like them or something, because people are pretty insecure at times. Lar very large number of my clinical clients, but also young men I've talked to in general, are absolutely terrified of women because they're terrified of being rejected. And the terror exists in precise proportion to the retraction to the woman. Yeah, 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 but women also experience the same thing. They experience rejection. They experience fear of rejection because humans are social creature and they hate to be rejected, especially by people they like. And it's also proportional to, like, I guess the attractiveness or whatever of the person they like. So it, it's not just, like, special amongst boys, which people like Jordan Peterson wants to act and think because he has this weird idea about women. Which is a horrible paradoxical situation to be in. It's often why men make such fools of themselves in front of women that they're attracted to. It's because, first of all, they don't see the woman that they're attracted to. Because what the hell do they know about her? They don't see her as an individual. They see her as the manifestation of a judgmental ideal. And then... Mm, maybe Jordan Peterson does, but I don't think every everybody does. Uh, and, you know, w women act the same way. Women will make a fool of themselves trying to impress a person they like. Because this is what people do. It's pretty much part of the human mating ritual. Do what you do what you think will work to get the attention of the person that you like. And it's only in establishing the relationship with the actual woman that they can start differentiating between the judgmental ideal and, and the actual individual woman. And that also requires a sacrifice. And the sacrifice is, you never can have an ideal woman. So to have a relationship... Yeah, but you can't have an ideal person either. There's like, there's not an ideal uh, man, woman, non-binary, whatever. There's no ideal person. People are led to believe this by various media sources, the news and all that kind of stuff. But people end up learning that, yeah, there's not like, there's never going to be a person that, that meets these, like, the highest standards that you have. But you do learn that. You, you do learn to appreciate people's uh, pros as well as their cons. And learn that people will uh, better themselves. Relationship with any woman, you have to sacrifice the relationship with the ideal woman. And you have to see the individual woman and separate her from the ideal. And that's the same thing that happens to the hero in Sleeping Beauty, right? He sees the evil queen who actually turns into the dragon of chaos. And it's not until... Okay, honestly, I just want to say, how does this have anything to do with destiny? It goes from talking about destiny to uh, Noah. I mean, not Noah, but... Um, Oh, I can't even remember. Some some random dude being thrown off a boat and being eaten by a whale, Jonah, and to men being like some kind of worshippers of women and women not understanding men. It's like, like, dude, he, this dude is literally going insane. Till he can able, he can defeat her, that he can establish a relationship with the actual princess. And that's exactly the case. Be Oops, didn't mean to start it over. But hey, if you like my content, please like, share, and subscribe. Peace out.